To, to our collaborative practice. This is fun for me because I think this is uh, you know, a rare opportunity when all of my worlds kind of come together at once. <laughs> so <laughs> this is my husband, Stefan. <laughs> I'm the silent one. <laughs> Not so silent as you'll see. I just happen to be holding the mic. <laughs> um, so. I, I'm so glad everybody laughed because we can't tell you how many times we've talked, uh, been given a presentation, and the room is silent, and everybody's scared to like, are we allowed to laugh? Is this all right? And um, you are. It, 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 it should be funny. It should be ukulele. Maybe we need to do a. <laughs> I mean, we're going to do a ukulele piece. Art and creativity and design. It should all. It should all be fun. Uh, Mary and I have been collaborating for uh, 12 years. Going to have to it, around there. We met in graduate school, and um, have been a collaborative couple. We've been doing photography and uh, 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 video, primarily video. And um, in the last, I guess, seven years, uh, we have, as we said, we have two dog. Uh, Three dogs, two kids, one chicken. Uh, in the last seven years, we've been concentrating a lot on our family and our two children. And um, we've been very interested. Something happened when we were, we were making artwork. You know, as, as creative people, right, we, we get up in the morning and we go to our jobs or we go to our studios or we go to the office. And we thought it was really weird that we were doing this separating our, our lives, our family, with our creative practice. And so we started saying, we, we started thinking about what is, what is it? You know, why are we paying somebody to not be with our children, not to be with our dogs, our chickens? Uh, we should really be making art uh, about our lives. About, we go to Costco, uh, and we're proud of it. Um, you know, we, we, our kids are in brownies and Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts, and uh, it's really weird being in Houston, and that's the funny thing is Houston's this great city of this suburbia creative mix. Uh, see, those are, that's all of us in our garage. And then, here we go, uh, right at that time that we were starting to think about this, about maybe this uh, practice of combining our kids with us, we came across this quote, and I think this is a really important quote, especially for today, about this idea of hidden. The most extraordinary thing in the world is an ordinary man an or and an ordinary woman and their ordinary children. And that really kind of inspired us of this idea that in every home, in every apartment, uh, all around, everywhere, there are these really kind of heroic people doing heroic things. You know, it's easy to kind of think about angels and you know the clouds part and you have these epiphanies but the the real thing is this getting up in the morning and going oh crap you know I got to go to work today uh, or I got to wake up to the same person <laughs> they didn't mean that for for you but they like <laughs> you know you know and what person are you talking about <laughs> I hand the mic back wait a there. minute <laughs> This, I, that really didn't come out right <laughs> at all. <laughs> but this hidden idea, you know, like, 
I'm fascinated with back, backyard wrestling. I go on YouTube and I find these crazy people like making wrestling rings in their backyards. And I'm like, why are they doing it? And they're doing it because, you know, they want to be heard. They want to be not ordinary. They want to be extraordinary. And it's hidden, but they don't want to be hidden. And that's been the basis for our work of, of trying to make things extraordinary, of like, uh, when we do our talks, uh, people say, what do your neighbors think? And we're like, we would love to know what our neighbors think. Uh, I'm going to, she gets the mic. <laughs> so um, a few years ago, we started um, uh, doing this series of photographs. And we were really, as Stefan said, kind of interested in what this idea of family was and what it meant for us to be this middle class family living in, you know, a, a uh, suburban home in the middle of Houston, Texas, you know, it's like we we were kind of had this thing of, you know, like uh, talking heads, you know, how did I get here? And um, so we start doing this series of photographs called Household and um, uh, looking using our house as a stage set and looking at the kind of excessiveness in our house and, um, and the um, the amount of stuff that you acquire once you have kids is just stunning. Um, and it never stops. And you throw stuff away, and you try to get rid of stuff, and it just never stops. And so um, so we did this series of photographs kind of about that that, um, that feeling um, and um, you know, kind of always having the, the lights set up and, and kind of being able to capture moments um, in our, our family life with our kids. Um, and, and then uh, none of them are staged. Uh, what we do is we just stop ourselves in the moment that they're happening and then break out the lights. Uh, <laughs> this, was, this is a great That's story. Woman. That's not, no, no, no. <laughs> we were trying to make this video piece and it wasn't working. We kept doing it and doing it. And I, I looked at Mary after maybe an hour of really bad work. <laughs> and I said to her, I said, um, I just feel like uh, my pants are falling down, and she looked at me like, what? What does that mean? And I'm like, I don't know. So she said, Mary goes, okay, let's pull down our pants. And then we took the picture. Um, all of the pictures have her uh, Greek mythology things, so, uh, or Shakespeare, the, the one of um, Emmett. Let's go back just one second. This is... That way. Uh, this is called like Sharon, who is the uh, the boatmaster going over the river Styx to the land of the dead in Greek mythology. So there's our son Emmett, uh, you know, going across his room. Uh, uh, this is called Cerberus. So again, the, the dog who guards <laughs> Hades from it. And again, another great story. We were supposed to make sandwiches for our daughter's school one day, so we went to Costco. We got the bread, we pulled the bread in, put it on the counter, and uh, left the house. Uh, uh, you know, 10 minutes later, we come back, and there's bread everywhere. Uh, she had gotten it on the counter, and I was furious. I was like, this dog's going in the backyard and never to be seen again, like my grandpa would, would do. And Mary goes, no, no, let's make art about it. And she pulls together the bread and sticks the dog on it. <laughs> Poor Penny. This one is um, Sisyphus, and um, this is my take on laundry. Uh, <laughs> um, and this, this piece was fun because uh, we had shown it a couple times, and uh, this one time this kid came up, and you know, maybe seven-year-old, and he says, I have the same PJs. And I was like, exactly, exactly. You and you know, thousands of other kids have the same stuff. Um, our daughter has an excessive amount of stuffed animals. This one's called Juliet. And uh, recycling, <laughs> Gab garbage bags. This was Pandora, <laughs> kind of spinning off of the idea that kids love to play in boxes more than they do uh, what's actually in them, although that was a filing cabinet. But <laughs> and this one we just titled Mythology. Um, and uh, the idea behind this one was that the couch um, becomes part of your family because you spend so much time on the couch. So I wanted to make the couch into its own character and be part of our family portrait. And um, this led to the, the video that you saw, the do-it-yourself love seat. Um, 
Oh no, I have to, the, the same, that's the same couch. And when we did do your self-love seat, our ideas always come in the morning over coffee, just like uh, uh, here. And one morning, Mary looks over at me over coffee, and she goes, I got this really great idea. Um, I'm going to cut up the couch, the very first thing we ever bought as a married couple. So it was like very significant. I'm going to cut it up with a chainsaw. And I looked at her, and I said, do we need to talk? You know, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she goes, no, no, it's really good art. It doesn't have to do anything. So then we kind of went with the destruction theme and made this piece um, called Whole. It's one of our uh, uh, favorite pieces, and um, there's a wonderful story. Well, first, it's we really love this idea of, we call it the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible music. I mean, like, we hear this. This is part of our culture. We watch it, and, you know, sometimes, at least in the, I think in the art community, you could say that, you know, you're a little um, trepidation or worried, you know, should I put something like that to a music? And we're like, yes, absolutely, because we want it to be. Uh, you know, bigger than life, uh, very dramatic. And the story what happened is we submitted this to two film festivals, very prominent international film festivals, one in America and one in Europe. And it was literally the same day we got an email from both of them. And the one in America said, uh, no, you don't get in. Uh, we're declining it. And the reason was uh, they put a little, you know, curator's note there that said, we don't understand. Um, you need to have a finish. It needs to end. Uh, there's not enough narrative. Why do you keep going around and around? Uh, you know, a good American film needs to have an end. And then the one in Europe said, yes, you got in. Um, and the, we loved it. Everybody on the panel loved it because there's no end. Uh, <laughs> you just keep going around and around. It's very American. And we're like, <laughs> I said, yes, but it was so funny, and it was exactly, you know, within an eight-hour period, uh, the, the two things. Uh, we then did a series uh, we called Comfort. It's a, a photographic series. Uh, we went into every room in our house, and whatever was in that room, this is the garage, we took everything in the room and uh, uh, boarded ourselves up like hoarders. So we took it, and we would board up the windows or the, uh, the doors or the garage doors. And so that's the outside of our garage and the inside of the garage. And we did this for every room, the, uh, the bathrooms, the bedrooms, the garage. And we took these photographs, and instead of simply just showing them as photographs, um, we went to Walmart. And for $29.95, you can get a polar fleece blanket printed of your favorite images, as you see puppies and... Um... We, I'm taking over now. We liked, um, we liked that, uh, this idea that we were taking, doing work about this accumulation of, of stuff and then photo making it into art and photographing and then sending it back to Walmart, <laughs> who is you know, somebody who's a retailer of all this stuff, and then having them make it into a new kind of art. Um, so we made them into these uh, polar fleece blankets and wanted people to kind of have this idea that they could find comfort um, in our stuff. Um, so this is an uh, installation shot from an exhibition. <clears throat> and that we wanted them to be like modern day tapestries. Like you would go to Europe and you would see these beautiful hand woven by monks tapestries, but these are like Walmart polar fleece. <laughs> I love this image too because these two people are there. They have the total like we didn't stage that. You know, these, <laughs> these two people are giving the very serious. I'm contemplating this artwork. <laughs> and we had done um, just kind of uh, we did more continuation of that work and um, took the took the the blankets and made them into clothes and um, uh, continued working with those blankets and we made cups and we've done plates and all different kinds of things but that then led us into this new work and we currently have a show up at the Galveston Art Center so if you're going down Galveston it's open up through April 20th 
Um, and we did a new series, two new bodies of work for the, the show there. The, the gallery there is kind of split into two gallery rooms. And so we decided to um, do two new bodies of work. And it's part of PhotoFest, so we did all photography. And um, instead of kind of working with the chaos and creating more chaos out of chaos, we decided to um, try to do these mandalas that would be making order out of the chaos and kind of this idea of healing our home um, with all of this stuff. Um. And what's fun is, is that, that all of these are, uh, it's important we all say, there's no Photoshop in it. Um, we go into every room of our house and we make these like Legos. This Lego one's pretty big. It's like eight foot, uh, nine foot wide. Uh, and we have to put the camera on the ceiling and uh, you know take the pictures. And we leave them in the rooms for you know four or five weeks to, uh, to like a real mandala, uh, you know, to to help out the house. But of course, the dogs are on it and the kids are on it. We're yelling at the kids, "Don't touch your Legos! It's a mandala!" Uh, and they're like, <laughs> I, "I don't understand." And then they come up and they're like, "I've been looking for that." And I'm like, "You've been looking for it? It's been like in this, you know." bucket of junk and you didn't miss it but now when we start using it in artwork they suddenly want it back <laughs> and and the best thing uh, we just told the story and yesterday we got an email um, from a company up in Boston that said we're a puzzle manufacturer uh, we would like to make these into puzzles and we thought it was a scam we thought the email was like you know get your ten thousand dollars or something and we wrote them back yesterday and said really and they said yeah yeah well, you can make them as puzzles and we're like that was the coolest thing it was like the nicest compliment like we're gonna have puzzles i don't know um, so then the other body of work that we did it's called covering and we thought this fit with this idea of hidden really nicely too and um, uh, it, it has a very kind of different feel from what we had been doing, um, which we, we liked because we wanted to kind of challenge ourselves with something um, uh, also quiet. And um, I was also kind of inspired by um, Stefan's mom passing away and this idea of a family death and how you remember people and um, kind of these hidden memories that you have. Um, and so we started using this, this sheet as kind of a shroud type of, of um, tool for us. And also using our dog, <laughs> Penny. <laughs> and then that's our, oh, uh, sorry. That's our other dog, Onyx. Sorry. Well, it was also, every time we give a talk, people always ask us, well, what will you do when the kids are gone? Because your kids are so important, your children are so important. And, and we asked them that. We were asking our son Emmett and our daughter Madeline, well, what do you do? And they said, well, we'll always remember you, and we'll always remember your, your face. Uh, and we're like, no, you won't. You're, uh, so we were covering their faces, our faces, with this series. Let's see how our daughter's grown so much. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> I think that's the last one. No, oh, we have one. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah.